When I came to Fairchild in 2002, we had to come up with another program that would engage the older kids, the middle and high school students, in similar thinking on appreciating the beauty and value of nature. So the Fairchild Challenge really evolved as a way to reach the older students and to have most of it happening at the schools rather than at the garden. So we give them a menu of challenge options and point goals so that they help their school earn points. The overall goal is to create these opportunities where these programs are helping to celebrate nature, cultivate mind and inspire action. And we have gone from engaging no middle and high school students to having 40,000 middle and high school students from 102 middle and high schools here in Miami-Dade as part of the program. So it has grown rapidly. The design of the program has every single entry, the art entries, the written entries, the design entries, judged by a panel. And that panel is made up of our community partners. And they look at the student work and they read the school garden projects, the environmental action reports, the different opinion papers and creative writing that they do, and they get even more invested in it. So we have like 100% retention in the number of partners that stay with the program and every year that grows. Because the program is interdisciplinary in scope, it appeals to the scholar and the slug, the writer and the performer, the scientist and the artist. And the teachers seem to embrace this sort of open-ended pedagogy that the challenge provides opportunities for kids to, to learn, to, to get involved in their own education. So as a botanic garden, we're always looking for ways to engage thousands and thousands of people in environmental awareness, scholarship and stewardship, to be a part of nature, to appreciate its beauty and its value. So this program worked because it seemed to give students a vehicle, an outlet, to stand up and be counted in their communities, in their homes, in their schools. And they want more and more of those opportunities. So chances to perform, to model fashion outfits, to write deep research papers, to do projects designing skyway bridges, create solar gadgets, to look at electric vehicles. It seems to appeal to a wide range of students. When you have these opportunities that engage students in very meaningful, hands-on, creative ways, you hope that what you're giving them are opportunities to find solutions. The gears are from a locomotive train. That's part of the Fair Child Challenge is uh, definitely this, um, just uh, having kids come out and engineering their own things, because a lot of the times, like the opportunities to engineer as a as a young kid in high school, like it's very limited. So to actually for the, the Fairchild to go out, supply you with the, the motor and the solar panel, which is expensive in, in terms, uh, is I think it's great. I have a Skyway proposal for the Everglades, which me and two other members are proposing to replace the current Tamiami Trail in the Everglades. So we're trying to create an environmental solution to an important ecological problem in South Florida. This has only furthered my interest in environmental design. You know, you could view it as either a hindrance to architectural creative potential or as a challenge where you can try new things, and that's what I view it as. It's really a great way to try and create new solutions, new types of architecture that haven't been seen before.